Hey everyone, please support what I do to help keep Greyhawk alive by subscribing to the channel. Also, please consider becoming a channel member to get early access to videos, exclusive live chats, quarterly adventure modules, and more. Thanks, and enjoy the show. So today I want to talk about another old favorite module of mine, Mordenkainen's Fantastic Adventure, today on Greyhawk Grognard. So Mordenkainen's Fantastic Adventure, uh, published in 1984. This is uh, one of those older modules that I love so much. Um, uh, it was published right after Isle of the Ape. And something I don't think I mentioned in, in my retrospective of Isle of the Ape is the cover. The, um, you know, you've got this faux leather with the gems and everything, making it look like an old tome. It's made to look like the box set, the gold box. And I love that uh, that design choice. I am I am not pleased that they gave that up after after only a couple of modules but it, i think it looks fantastic um it's a three level module for high level players uh you are actually given four of gary gygax's uh player characters as npc as, as characters that you could run through the adventure if you want or you could use it with your own uh, morton Heinen, of course is one of the uh it's one of them uh rigby rag and i think bigby is the other one um and uh, it's a three-level dungeon with this gorgeous fold-out map with all that good stuff. And if you can, you can kind of see it looks like one of the old um, uh, 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 geomorphs uh, from back in the day. It's got that that kind of very uh, closed-in, uh, you know, lots and lots of rooms all smooshed together, and it's got that classic old-school design of th these giant open spaces. Um, you know, which form an entire uh, uh, level of, of the dungeon. Uh, this was originally part of uh, uh, Rob Kunz's uh, El Raja Key uh, uh, dungeon, and when he was brought into Gary's dungeon as the uh, co-DM, they kind of merged the two worlds together. So uh, 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 Maury Castle is uh, a couple hundred miles southeast of Greyhawk, and there's a lot of communication uh, between them. They, the module says that there's lots of rumors about Maury Castle uh, floating around the city of Greyhawk all the time. Uh, and the scenario is basically set up to um, say, basically, you a, a, a new passageway has been found into the dungeons beneath Maury Castle, and uh, there's these impenetrable doors that nobody can get into. It just so happens that um, Mordenkainen has the uh what is it the silver key of opening the uh, silver key of portals um which will basically open everything uh it is a uh it, it was found uh, by morton kind uh in a uh, uh chapel of dalt who a uh, chaotic good uh deity who gives generously to those he favors um uh dalt is a new deity uh uh, in, uh well not invented for this, but uh, was first presented in this. Uh, and later on, Rob kind of hinted that there was some sort of Lovecraftian, uh, uh, you know, chime of the uh, way of the opener kind of thing uh, going on with Dalt. So this is a lot more going on there uh, behind the scenes. Um, but basically, you know, you get these three levels, three very distinct levels in terms of theme. Um, I'm not going to go through everything, obviously, uh, but I wanted to, to point out a few of the design uh, aesthetics. I already I already mentioned that the first level here, uh, this one, uh, it, if you can see that right there, you can see it, it's mostly a big open space, right? You know, you've got this big pool up here, big open spaces. This is where you come in, by the way, from that uh, unopenable door. And then, of course, you got this other big open space here. Um, down here, uh, this is sort of bleachers, um, and, and this is kind of a throne area where the first iron golem uh, ever in the game was uh, was placed, and he's got this um, big uh, whip made of cockatrice feathers and uh, it, it, in the original, according to the um, to the introduction, uh, Mordenkainen and another one of the uh, characters was turned to stone. Uh, they were teleported out, returned flesh, and came back. Um, so it's a it's a very very tough encounter. Uh, this uh, the way Gary even says it in the uh, introduction um, to the module. You will note that this is what is generally termed a hack and slash module. There's plenty of real thinking necessary, but the action is nearly nonstop, so the former term is not inaccurate. Um, 
you know, it's it, the, the, you're going to get a lot of combat here. It's designed for high level characters. You know, uh, the uh, the stats that they give here, uh, Rig, Rigby here is a ninth level cleric. Uh, Mordenkainen is a 12th level magic user. Uh, Rag is a 9th level fighter. And uh, Big B is a 10th level uh, magic user. And that'll actually also give you some insight into what was considered high level back in the first uh, first edition days. Uh, you know, if you could cast a 5th level spell, well, you were you were something. Uh, as opposed to today, where you get these 20th level characters uh, walking around all over the place. Um, but in terms of a design aesthetic, one thing, and I've mentioned this before in, in connection with other modules, um, even finding the stairs to the next level is a challenge because you have to find secret trap door and 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 it's 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 not obvious how you're supposed to get to the next level down. Uh the and the level the level two does the same thing. The the stairs to level three are hidden behind secret doors and so forth. So there's a lot of um uh, exploration necessary and you have to use uh in my the, the, the way i would do it is i would use my divination spells you know there's that's why they're there is to find this kind of stuff out i don't know how how would we best get to the next level of the dungeon um you know you get you can kind of play the 20 questions thing depending on what uh, spell you're using but the, the the fact that we see the um you know the way to get to the good stuff is hidden is something that we saw in another Rob Quint's uh, adventure, the Hidden Shrine of uh, uh, of Tharizdun, uh, the Lost Shrine of Tharizdun, or Forbidden Shrine. You know what? Tharizdun. Um, we saw that too. You know, you know, you don't get to the good stuff unless you can find the secret staircase that lets you get there. This is this is set up the same way. Um, you kind of get the impression that this is a living dungeon. Uh, it's not just some place that has been locked away for for a hundred years. Um, Although a lot of the rooms seem like they are not, they've not been used in a long time. Uh, but you have actual guards that are that are there that are you know actively uh, you know on duty for stuff. And there's evidence of a cult that's going on. Um, and uh, you know you get three different real big set pieces. Here we have that iron golem that I mentioned, which is apparently inspired, by the way, by uh, Jason and the Argonauts. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, by um, uh, the the Conan the Barbarian Robert E. Howard uh, story uh, with the uh, the iron statues in the uh, on the island of the Sea of Villiet. I forget the name of the story, but I think that's where they got the the first idea for the iron gold. Um, then on level two, you've got Eli Tomarast, who's a, uh, a an outside wizard who has come into the dungeon to kind of learn its secrets and so forth, and he set up this false cult. Um, and then in the final. Uh, uh, in the final dungeon level, you've got the uh, the demon Kurzit, who is there to protect a uh, a magic book, and um, he's the object of the cult that Eli Tomarest has, has set up. So it all kind of you know, there's a lot of uh, thematical things that work together here. Um, the dungeon was re was later redone in uh, Dungeon Magazine, I think two ten. Uh, or 120, uh, something like that, uh, where um, it was brought up to, you know, to the modern uh, game and kind of rewritten a little bit and there was stuff added to it. It's part of the uh, Mori Castle, uh, as I mentioned, and there's a lot of Mori Castle stuff floating around um, that I don't know has ever been kind of collected into one cohesive whole. Um, but then again, neither has Gary's original Castle Greyhawk, so I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, you know, uh, it is a, I, I ran this back in the day, um, and uh, it is it is indeed a hack and slash um, module, and it's it's probably even a little overpowered uh, for the uh the the ninth to tenth level characters that uh, that you're given with it. I think, a, you know, another level or two would uh, would make it uh, much more workable for uh you know, for players who aren't really used to that high level play and have all of the, the nuances of magic items and spells at that level kind of at their fingertips. Uh, but it is a, it is a great module. Uh, you get, um, there's some new magic items, some of which did not make it into Unearthed Arcana. Um, there's new monsters, uh, some of which did make it into um, uh, Monster Manual 2, like the tiered. Uh, but you have other things like the Hetfish, the Colchin, Coltiln, uh, the Slow Shadow, uh, and of course Kurzit himself, uh, who aren't in there. There's magic items. Um, 
like the uh, dust of dullness and the potion of controlling damage uh, that are uh, unique to this. Uh, this comes from uh, from the time when TSR was uh, suffering some of the financial difficulties, and you know they were they were putting out a lot of product in order to uh, you know to bring in money, which is nothing wrong with that. Um, but there's a few little editing uh, things here and there. Not that I'm one to talk, but uh, you know they. Um, they, the the module obviously because it was originally written in like 1973, uh, 1972. So it was originally written for the little brown books, and uh, you know they brought it up to first edition AD and D standards. But there's still a few little things here and there where they talk about like the side of chaos, and they they still make reference to um, uh, to character uh, to to NPCs by the character title. Uh, you know, so you know like a tenth level. Um, uh, magic user is a necromancer, and a sixth level assassin is a killer. And they, you know, they just say, they just toss that out. They're, this room has six killers in it, and you're supposed to know what that means. And by this time in the AD and D world, you were more likely to use levels and numbers than the titles in 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 those terms, and in, in, especially in the uh, uh, in in the foolish modules. So you know, there's a few little anachronisms in there, uh, but that's just kind of adds to his charm and reinforces the fact that this it this does go back to the hoary past of uh, of the game and especially the Greyhawk campaign and so forth. So anyway, uh, I this is a, certainly recommended. I'm sure it is up on Drive Through RPG, and if so, I shall post a link below. Um, hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think in the comments, and uh, stay safe from Pinkertons. Thanks for watching today's video. Please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Below you'll find links to my Patreon which helps make these videos possible. You'll also find the web store where you can buy my books, and my blog where you'll find all sorts of free downloads and other articles. Thanks and have a great day.